Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, we are going to be pulling in a special guest shortly, hopefully. Um, and he knows he's going to be here. We're not just pulling in someone randomly. Um, and we're going to try to just do something with differential geometry. Apparently I am insane enough that I want to keep streaming after streaming for three hours. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be, uh, I'm on Discord talking to the guy here. You can't see it. Um, uh, but I will let him know. Uh, okay, so let me go ahead and call him and let's see what the hell, if this works. This will not work. Hello? Can you hear me? Not, not you people in the, in the uh, stream. I, I'm, I hope you can hear me on the stream. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Okay, apparently you cannot hear me, so I'll s type this out. Um. Okay, we have issues here, maybe. Um, I'm guessing you can't hear me. I can hear you, so if you want, uh, you can answer a voice. I heard you, and then you cut out. Okay, hang on. Let's see what we can do about that. Uh, testing one, two, three. I'm streaming right now also. I don't know if you can hear me there. Boy, this is confusing. Okay, we're waiting for you to say something. I do not have push to talk. Sorry. Um, let me okay, I can hear you now. Hello. So, I don't know if it's like you have two sources on me. I don't know who I'm talking to. I mean, the people in the stream chat... Okay. Uh, the people in the stream chat can already hear me, and so they don't realize there's an issue. Um, um, so go ahead and... I, I don't know if you were saying something and then you cut out, or... You actually said a whole sentence, and then maybe you have pushed to talk. I don't know. Um, so if I do this correctly, I should be able to have you be heard too, but god damn it, this is going to be ugly if it doesn't work. Um, but tell me when you're ready. Yeah, this feels like there could be some... Uh oh, are you hearing a delay or something? Oh, this is going to be nice because I can hear myself with a delay. No, I mean, I think it's just... Uh Right. Okay, let's... Just, you know, the entire connection going around the world and all that. Right. Okay, hang on. Um, we should probably not do it this way because we're going to be very confused. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so you cannot hear me on Discord, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, we should at least be able to talk real well, time. Well, I could hear you, and then you cut out. Huh. So it's not... Okay, Jesus, I don't know. Um, I have my... Oh, wait, wait, okay. I'm going to check my mic on Discord. Testing. Testing. Can, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, I don't know if you heard me there, yeah. but uh, yeah, now I heard. It, it was confusing because I heard you from Twitch as well, and uh, so I wasn't really sure if I. But yeah, now I hear you on Discord. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so if there is anyone in the channel, uh, you should be able to hear both of us. I've turned on two forms of. Uh, I've turned on my own audio, which I know works, and I've turned on desktop audio. So from oh, hang on. Now I've turned on desktop audio. So you should be able to hear from... Well, actually, I didn't get to catch your name. What is your name? Uh, well, uh, here I'll go by Tobishev. You'll go by... Sorry, say that again? Obishev. Obishev. Uh, uh, sort of... I mean, you can see how it's written on Discord. Oh, oh, so oh, 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 right, right, right. Start. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, yes, I was actually on uh, back on... Um, 
Uh, Tobichev. Got it. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so now what we're going to do here is, um, if I understand correctly, we're going to try to solve this problem using uh, differential geometry. Is that is that what you were proposing? Uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like the sort of problem where going to the space of the surface of the sphere mm -hmm. would be helpful. Yes, yes, agree. So let me go ahead and bring up a... Um, uh, just a page so, you know, we can, we can, uh, okay, you can see my screen, right? Or? Yeah, on this, uh, on Twitch. Got it. And you have Twitch muted, so you're not hearing the, yourself delayed. Yeah. Okay. So let's, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sort of a little file for this so we have something going on here. Um, let's just call it, uh, diff geom, ethics, and we might end up going to, uh, Wolfram Cloud. Okay. So let's begin. Go ahead. So you either got really quiet or something happened. It's been a while since I uh, yeah, did any different differential geometry, but I found some uh, notes. Okay. That talks about things that seem somewhat uh, interesting or helpful. Okay. So I mean, so this is uh, my background is I took a course in uh, general relativity many years ago, and now I can sort of remember big keywords to Google. Okay, let's try that. Um, so do you have a way you want to start with this? I could tell you how I would start, but that might be different. No, no, you go ahead. I, okay. I mean, I'm just... I mean, the problem is the way I'm doing it isn't going to work. I mean, I know it's not going to work because um, it doesn't work. But anyway, um, so the first thing I normally do is let's, let's call our points um, uh, A and B. And let's say that they have longitude and latitude a long a lat b long b lat are you happy with that so far hello yeah sure okay try to trying to drink at the same or you're trying to drink your tea at the same time okay um okay so the first thing i would do is convert these uh, to uh, cartesian coordinates Yeah, so I'm not uh, sure why, I mean, okay, so go to just uh, three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates? Yes. Okay, yeah, so that that's like sort of the thing I'm not really sure of, because okay. I'm not very used to using uh, uh, coordinate systems like actual uh, for you know thinking about the real places on earth and stuff like that oh okay i mean as you point out the problem is uh the earth sur the earth's surface is actually a two-dimensional surface not a three-dimensional surface yeah exactly so that's why i don't really see why you want to go to three dimensions when i mean the approximation that you are on uh, the fixed star is pretty good right and to me that means that you have to because uh, spheres i mean they are in three dimensions right but that you're saying maybe they don't have to be yeah exactly so like uh in differential geometry what you do instead is that you basically you define a distance function that's okay. kind of wonky right and that encodes the geometry so in okay. the Twitch chat, I put a link to some uh, notes that I guess yes, they I do part, part of this sort of detailed and I guess, but also I think they sort of expect you to know, have done a bit of differential geometry. So it, uh, I'll try to follow it and like parts. Okay. Say, okay, this is good introduction. And then there's like, okay, here I, I need to remember things from before. Okay, well, let me go ahead and bring it up. I, I've just, uh, let me go ahead and bring it up here. Um, OK. 
Okay, I have to do a little bit of juggling because I'm on two different computers, but that should not be a problem. Um, two sphere. Okay, so this is maybe a whole different approach to this problem. Um, and let me get a. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Or maybe too big, but let's take a look here real quick. Uh, the so, are you streaming from two computers at the same time, or is it? No, uh, I'm streaming. Oh, okay. I'm streaming from a virtual machine. Um, that is, obviously, it's running on my main computer, but I try to keep it as separate as possible because I don't want to reveal anything on the main machine that could be dangerous. Ah, okay. Yeah. I was wondering why it was so laggy. Oh, it shouldn't be that laggy, but okay. All Twitch streams are laggy for some reason, like four seconds laggy. Beyond that, it would be me. Okay, so... I mean the interface lag. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. You mean like what I do comes up... Uh, what do you mean? I mean, uh, when you scroll, it's very choppy and oh, stuff like that. Oh, yes, yes. My my frame resolution rate is very slow. Um, yeah, that is true. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we know how to compute the distance between two elements, right? That's just the, uh, the dot product. Although that's still in three dimensions. Um, yeah, exactly. So, the... This G, Y, J thing they have here is the distance, it, the metric. Right. So is this is based on... So it's the measure of the distance in a space that is the two sphere. Okay. So if I am understanding this correctly... For us, uh, R is fixed at 1, right? We're not changing our radi radius. So, okay, good, they do that right away. Yeah. So, restricting to radius as constant, uh, we're going to have R squared, which is 1 in our case, d theta squared plus 1, sine squared, uh, theta, d phi squared. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there are more intrinsic ways to get this uh, metric. Okay. All right. So if we want to know the distance between two points, we integrate this ds squared, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me write this down. This actually seems both correct and interesting. Um, so ds squared equal equal, or just equal, whatever. Um, I don't think I can cut and paste this, but oh, maybe I can. Nice. Oh, wow, I didn't know it could print theta. So r squared, uh, let me go ahead and leave it in as this, times d theta squared uh, plus r squared times sine squared of theta d f And the d phi squared here is, is like a multiplier, right? So in other words, um, it's not inside the sine. No, Kay. it's not. Agreed. Okay, so I'm going to do it like this. Um, so that, I'll go ahead and put some parentheses here, even though they're not really necessary. So this actually seems correct, because I know that when you move in, um, when you move uh, along latitude, that's a fixed distance. That's a, That doesn't change. Um, because one degree of latitude is the same pretty much anywhere in the world. Longitude, however, is dependent on the cosine of latitude, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Therefore, squaring that would give us sine squared because the, uh, the negative goes away. Does that make sense? Hello? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. <laughs> Dude, you're the one who introduced this to me. Um, yeah, uh, uh, but I, I'm not. I, 
I mean, I I know this this expression comes from the when you start with a, me, a metric, but this thing about the, doing it with latitudes and longitudes. Uh, oh, it's, it's not something I do. Okay, I think theta here just so you're thinking of theta and phi as being spherical angles. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that that's the same thing actually. So theta is the angle in the xy plane, and phi is the angle that reaches into the z plane, right? I mean, it's not uh, fixed, but uh, yeah, I guess that's some. Um, I'm sorry, I get a lot of. Uh, I hear myself when I talk a bit, so. Oh, it's I'm sorry. Very distracting. That shouldn't happen but if. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. That's probably how it's uh, defined. It's the because this this expression from the start. It's just like the spherical coordinates, and for the spherical coordinates, there's a convention of uh, which of these yes. different angles go between x and y and z. So right, it's whichever the common convention is. I guess. The, I don't know if there's a. The problem is with for mathematicians. For us, theta, for everyone, I think theta means, uh, you know, going in the xy plane, starting at the x-axis and moving counterclockwise. The phi, though, for some people means um, starting in the xy plane and going up towards the z-axis, but to other people it means starting at the z-axis and going down towards the uh, xy plane, which is, they call that the co-latitude instead of the latitude. But let's not worry about that. Let's not worry about that. So now the, the problem is there are many paths we can take between two points, right? Yep. And the distance we travel would be by integrating this, uh, uh, well, we have to take the square root of it and then integrate uh, this uh, ds, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but there's a condition to do parallel comport. Uh, transport and that makes you go the shortest distance. Okay. Carrying the vector by parallel transport around a closed loop. Boy, I want to see a diagram of that. Oh. So you're basically going from one point and coming back to the point. Um, uh, okay, I'm not. I'm confused now. So you have the diagram. Where's the diagram? The diagram is. Let me fin find you a diagram. Okay. Because they go through a lot of math here pretty quickly, which normally I like, but... Mm. This gets pretty ugly, too. I mean, they're not necessarily as... I mean, they're not super bad, but it's still pretty ugly. Okay. Yeah, I think it might be just inherent to the math. Okay. So I, the, the Wikipedia page for parallel transport has a diagram. Okay, going there now. Parallel transport is a way of transporting geometrical data along smooth curves in a manifold. The manifold is equipped with an affine connection, uh, one to transport, they stay parallel. Okay. And it gets very mathy very fast. But th 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 there's this diagram. See, I'm not, I'm not really understanding what they're so trying to do. If you look at it, the, it starts at A, and uh, it goes uh, towards the pole, always pointing in the same direction. But since uh, it's at the, we're on a curved surface, right. where it's actually pointing, turns. And then you go down. Uh, oh, OK down from the pole again and then it stays pointing at the same direction and then you come back and then you see oh they're no longer pointing in the same direction okay and see that's where I'm okay so I see that if you're starting at point A which appears to be on the equator but it probably doesn't matter and you go straight north you will hit the North Pole and at any given point you will actually be moving north you'll be moving towards the pole Now, when you go south, shouldn't be. I mean, what? Why do these things suddenly stick out, going to the right? Because uh, you go down at ninety degrees from where you ca 
came up. But uh, since you're trying to always not move the arrow, the arrow should always point in the same way. Uh, and when you move orthogonal to like the curvature or to the direction you're pointing, then the curvature doesn't affect you. But when you move along it, like when you go up, you move along. When you go to the north from A, you move along, uh, or the curvature goes along with your uh, what the direction you're pointing. So you always have to keep pushing this arrow down so that it stays in the plane, so to speak. Oh, uh, but oh, then I see. When you go when you go orthogonal to this, it, it stays in the plane all the time because you're I mean you you keeping pointing it in the curvature direction. That doesn't like that. fully make sense. I would like to say hello to RB Kilia in. Uh, in chat. Uh, by the way, can you hear both of us or just me? Uh, and I, you said these are normal vectors. That's what they look like to me. Um, but I don't know if this just diagram is weird. Okay, can you hear both of us? Fantastic. I've learned how to co-stream. Danger awaits. Um, so what you're seeing is here at the point A, you start off by going up the z-axis, right? Straight up. But you have to keep pushing down to stay on the surface of the sphere. Uh, yeah. And then over here, you're going to go straight towards okay south, which means you're going to go down the z-axis. Oh, but in this case, you have to push upwards to get into the to keep the sphere going. I mean, the the. the the trick is that locally at the north pole you go down 90 degrees uh, orthogonal from the one you came up. Right. I mean, you're going down the z. Here you're coming up the z-axis. Uh, so if you if you weren't careful, you would leave the sphere. Oh, but actually that's going to be true here too. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So when you go down, you also have to uh, keep uh, pushing the arrow, okay. the, uh, yeah, your arrow down, so you keep on the sphere, but you don't have to rotate it to do it. Oh, I see. All right, let's go ahead and bring up uh, Geo. Sort of my understanding. Okay, well, you're the only one who understands this right now, so uh, let's go ahead and go to GeoGebra and see if we can get a diagram going that's actually movable. I guess what are the 3D version? Okay. I should be signed in. Okay, let's do a sphere. Actually, we'll go ahead and do it like this. Um, so we're going to create a sphere of um, center and point. Centered here of, of radius 4. Let's see. Come on, I want, I want to get the radius 3. Because okay, that's the easiest. Um, and then... Um, let me see if I can get rid of this, the axis plane, because it looks ugly. Okay. So now you're saying that, um, if you were to start, let me actually draw a point here. And i got to be careful, I'll keep it on the sphere. Oh, good, I, that does go on the sphere. And one over here. Okay. And I might move them closer together at some point. Um... These points are not on the sphere, are they? They are. Well, the f the coordinates seem to suggest they're not, but point LN me might mean something different than point. Oops, what the hell? Whoa! Okay, well, we can pretend they're on this. Yeah, I guess they are on the sphere if they're gonna, like, only show halfway. Okay, so what you're saying here is, um,. If I want the North Pole is obviously right here at the uh, Z axis. Um, so if I wanted to move from, if I wanted to go straight to the North Pole, I would do this diagonal line, right? Assuming that the sphere wasn't there, right? Uh, I don't see any line. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're, you're, you're just showing. Tracing it with the mouse, yeah. 
So I mean, I would go from here to there, right through the center of the sphere. Or nah. I mean, if you want to move on the surface, you can't move inside. Right. But what I'm saying is if I started off going in a straight line, I would have to keep pushing up to, uh, to stay on the sphere. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure what you mean with pushing up. Okay. Well, you were saying that if you were going from um, sea to the North Pole, you had to keep pushing in a direction to stay on the surface of the sphere, right? I mean, so the principle is you have your little arrow. I mean, you think that locally uh, space is flat, so right. you have an arrow with point in a well-defined direction. There's nothing complicated. Then you're going to move to a point infinitesimally close to that, uh, and that oh. point has its own little flat space around it that's infinitesimal. And then you have to do a little transformation to go from the first point to the second point. Oh, so you're saying we take the local flat plane of C. Uh, in other words, we take uh, wh what this plane, if these four arrows were to spread out, what this plane would be, right? Yeah. And then move a little bit to the north in that plane, but now you have a problem because uh, the, the second point you're visiting is actually down, you know, is below your plane because you have, uh, you have left the surface of the Earth. Yeah, and then you have to do a little transform to get there. So an affine transform downwards um, to get back to the Earth. Yeah. Okay. And I guess the cool thing is you're always moving in the direction of the Z-axis, right? Because you're going to the North Pole? Yeah. Okay. Um... Are you though? I mean, if you're here. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. In your local plane, you are going. Um, you're going up towards the z-axis. And the local plane yeah. is going to be like the xz plane or something. I mean, the local plane is the tangent plane to the sphere. Right. The tangent to the sphere that includes c. And in that plane, um, I guess you're going towards the y-axis if you refer to that plane as the xy plane. If you decide one direction is is x and the other, the, the direction that goes towards the pole. Okay, I can see that. So you move from this plane, uh, you move up towards, you increase your z-value, then you move down a little bit because the you're, you've left the surface of the Earth, right? Okay. And then eventually you reach the North Pole. And now you want to go back to point D, which is, I mean, you can't really choose this to be orthogonal, right? Because you don't know where your point D is going to be. Uh, well, I mean, in the example, you can, you choose it. Okay. So I guess that's what I'm confused by here. Are we doing a very specific example where one of the points is 90 degrees? So both of the points are on the equator in this... What the hell? Where the hell did the diagram go? Um. The diagram is... The typical example is that, that you have uh, chosen a point on the equator. Okay. That's like half the sphere. No, the quarter of the sphere. Away. Got it. Got it. I thought there was a diagram here. Did I just lose it? I know there's a diagram on the other thing. I thought there was a diagram here, but yeah, it's in Wikipedia, not in the PDF. Oh. Okay. Huh. Okay. All right, let's go back to Wikipedia then. I, I thought I saw it, but okay. All right. I could have sworn I saw it somewhere else. Okay, but anyway. Um, so in this example, you're going from the equator to the North Pole and back to a point that is 90 degrees away from between A and B. Um, yeah, I mean, the B is a quarter of the right. sphere away. Right, 90 degrees out of 360 degrees. 
Um, okay. So what are we saying? Okay, so how does this help us with our problem of two random points, three random points, actually? I mean, the example is for uh, how parallel transport works and how the even while strictly talking just on a two-dimensional surface you can encode uh, this three-dimensional structure of the space hmm so you're saying we could take this so if you start uh, with I mean if you do this exercise that you move uh, a, a vector in a closed loop on a flat Cartesian space uh -huh. you will it will point when you get back to the start it will point in the same direction okay well um so are you saying we can model the surface of this sphere as a plane and then uh, do some operations there yeah so the the plane like i mean it's it's a two-dimensional coordinate system, right. but by imposing a special distance measure, it will have the structure of the sphere. So, okay. like, if you move s uh, vectors around on a sphere, s special things will happen. Right. And if you have the appropriate metric, you can do this with just two coordinate systems and not have to have uh, this radius involved that's always constant and all these things. Right. Uh, because for us it is constant. Okay, so now... Can you help me uh, understand, so our distance metric, hmm, so this is a plane, um, so we start out, I guess we're going to make these numbers, um, okay, so this is our, um, this is our plane. So we start with a point, you're saying, like on the origin, right? Yeah, that's an appropriate choice. And another point is, let's say, 90 degrees to the east. Yeah. Okay. The North Pole, of course, is, well, it's everywhere, but I mean, roughly speaking, the North Pole is, um, can I say, like, right here? For me, you haven't drawn it yet. Oh, okay. Do you see all three points now? No. No? Now. Oh, now. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So, um... So what you're saying is our distance metric from A to C to the North Pole w is to integrate the quantity we saw before, which is a d um, d phi squared. Well, that's the metric squared. Well, in this case, it's just going to be d phi, right? There's no theta change. Yeah. Okay. Um, and going from here to here is also just a change in phi, right? So, I guess my question is, um, what can we do with these three points to make it clear that we're using a, a, a curvy linear measure instead of a, instead of a, you know, a linear measure? Do you mean we do to these false points? Yeah, I guess that's my question. My question is, are you saying the surface of a sphere can be represented by a uh, just Cartesian, uh, just two Cartesian coordinates. Not sure I would call them Cartesian. Sorry, by two coordinates. Yes, okay. uh, um, so you can do it with two coordinates. 
Right, that's the whole point. Instead of having to do three coordinates, we're only looking at the surface of the sphere with two coordinates, and our two coordinates are theta and phi. Yep. Okay. So, I have modeled the x-axis as being theta, and the y-axis as being phi. Is there something wrong with what I'm doing there? No, I don't think so. Okay, so now explain to me how we um, we do this little change thing, uh, this metric, uh, to to I guess figure out the uh, to make that closed loop or whatever. I'm not sure I understood your questions. Okay, so now we're going to make a closed loop from A to C to B back to A or something. Yep. Okay. So on this diagram, can I just draw the lines or something? Yeah, but you're drawing now on uh, Cartesian coordinate systems. Well, yes, but I mean, um, but it, these are still so just... It will be a flat space. Right. But I mean, certainly you can represent two-dimensional coordinates on a Cartesian grid, right? You can that. But you're saying it's not a good idea. Um, no, um, it's, it's just like, I think it's going to be confusing because you will be drawing on this flat space. Right. And uh, you want to do, you want, but you want to do it with the geometry of a curved space. So I don't know if you, like, y really, if you want to do it, uh, you should probably have some very weird coordinate transform. And then this, the construction, I say, makes sense. So like the example, it makes sense when you look at it in, uh, like, uh, this, uh, moving the vector, and it end up not pointing in the same direction when you come back. That sort of makes sense when you look at it from uh, the 3D perspective. Okay. But uh. if you try to do this in uh, just 2D, uh -huh. it's going to look kind of whack. I mean, uh, so if you have this ge flat space, what should happen is if you take your vector and you push it up to A, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But then when you push it down to, I oh know, actually, what did you call your points? Oh, just A and B is fine, in I don't the care. flat space. Yeah. No, but in the geo... Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, let me get back there. Um, A and B, and I call this C, I can rename it N, I mean... Uh, it, it's fine. So, uh, uh, I mean, okay, so, so I mean... I can always hear myself talking uh, with a slight delay, which is very distracting. So I have to mute the channel okay. uh, when I'll I speak, so I can speak for a longer period of time without interrupting myself. And <laughs> then I can't hear you, so I'm uh, trying to uh, sort of guess when you talk. Okay, that's a little strange. Um, c I mean, do you think it's yours? Yeah, I don't know why I hear he hear myself all the time, but it really is very consistent. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm using earphones, so you might be hearing yourself from my earphones. But yeah, maybe. I, uh, I'm not sure why. But okay, so, like, if you point, if you make, you, I saw you can make a little vector, so if you make a little vector in GeoGebra. Okay, one sec. Let me make this capital N, sorry, I'm just very particular about that. So, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. So you have this vector here, and you have this vector here, then you have this vector, these vectors, right? Mm, no, so, I mean, if you 
you you make you make your little U, and right. then you parallel transport it, which means you uh, move it without you move it along uh, the uh, Y axis without changing its direction. You mean the X axis, right? So then you move. You, so you make a little U, and then you make a little U at N that points in the same direction. Okay, let me let me go back. I'm going to delete this vector. Uh, I'm going to delete W. So you're okay with U, right? Yeah, but I would make it a little bit smaller. What do you mean? Sorry. So U is not. I mean, U is not the vector joining A and N. U is a, a vector oh. point. I got it. I got. It, I got it. I got. It, I got. It. It's a, so I got it. It mean, points towards N, but it's not the this the one that points all the way. I got it. Give me one second here to get rid of you, and then I I don't I don't do it now. Okay, so we're saying when we start a day, we do a little tiny vector, um, vector from point. That yeah, goes because it's w we're making a little a vector that's the right size for us in the small neighborhood of A, something like that. Right. Why am I not being able to draw this vector? Vector from point. So like starting point and vector. That should be okay. Okay, hang on. I can fix this. Um, so let's create a point. Well, like right here, which represents like zero distance, but I mean, you know, we understand that it's that it's an infinitesimal distance here. Okay, so then we do um, then I can do a vector between those two. So, are you happy with that vector? Yeah. Okay, and we're pretending this is an infinitesimal distance, not really ten degrees. Okay, now what do we do? transporting this vector up to n will be, well, I mean, basically the same sized vector at n pointing in the same direction. So here, I mean, in this first step, nothing unusual happens. Okay. So what do we do next? Do we have another little uh, dot here that we keep just going up or what? What do you mean? Uh, how you represent this like I mean this little vector that you made at A mm -hmm. make the same vector but at N starting from N oh okay so it still points up right I mean okay I'll do it I'll do what you said Hang on. so like this hang on let me get this V out of your way like this. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So now, uh, the next step in this uh, example is that now we're going to parallel transport our vector uh, down to B. And uh, if you do it in flat space, well, I mean, it's going to be the same vector pointing in the same direction, but from B. Oh, oh! I think I, is, yeah. I think I see what you're saying. Um, in oh, so okay. Let me let me let me see. If I, see I do know what you're saying. So you're saying we're going to end up with a vector here. Uh, hang on. There, it's above B. Um, but the exact same vector. Yeah. Hang on. Let me get this point correct. Let me get this vector correct. And then let me move this thing out of your way. Okay. We'll move you a little bit down here. But anyway. Okay. So what you're saying is that you've taken this vector and you've moved it from point A to point B uh, without changing its direction. Uh, 
exactly. This is uh, parallel transport in a flat space. Okay. So, um... So now, if you do it on uh, the two sphere, what would happen at point B is that instead of pointing uh, upwards, it now points along the x-axis away from A. Hmm. Yes, you're not seeing that. So if we had a vector So if we had a vector pointing up from A, we carried it to the north pole where it's still pointing up, right? And then when we bring it back down, it should still be pointing like, oh, okay, um, it's still pointing up though, right? It's still pointing towards north. If you go to your 3D thing... This thing here, yeah. Oh, you mean my 3D GeoGebra? This guy, yeah? Yeah, that one. And now you align yourself so that you're uh, at some axis and looking up at your X, uh, with Z axis. Um, so put yourself on the sort of the equator. Okay, hang on. So we're at the equator right now, right? If this is the north axis. So right now we have it pretty much right at the equator and that's why the y axis looks very compressed. There. Now yeah, exactly. Okay. So now, I mean, if you point... If you have a arrow pointing towards the z-axis and you move it up to the North Pole. Yep. If you imagine that, then uh, once you get to the North Pole, I mean, you on you have t t without tr you will be pointing south, and you will be pointing at the south that's on the opposite side of the sphere that you started from. Uh, okay. So at the equator, I start with a um, vector pointing north. Okay, I sense trouble, but okay. Um, so let me go ahead and draw another point here that's right, like right there. Um, hmm. Um, I, I mean, I'm sort of seeing what you're saying. You're sort of going like north-ish, but you're also keeping yourself on the sphere. And then when you reach the, the, the North Pole, your sphere is pointing down the other direction. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's see. But now, instead of continuing uh, in the direction you were going, you decide, no, let's go down uh, from, go south in, uh, at... Uh, right angle to okay. the direction I came from. So okay. you go down, let's say you go down uh, towards the the red five. Okay, so you're coming up like this, if you keep pointing in the same direction and you keep turning your arrow so it, it stays on the earth, you are pointing south, but now you want to turn left by, uh, sorry, right by, oh I have my axes flipped. Um, Turn left by 90 degrees. So, yeah, you so no, you, no, it's not that you. I mean, you're not turning your arrow. You you are going and you have your arrow that you're pushing in front of you. Right. And then you turn, but the arrow you keep pointing it in the same direction. Okay. So then. Okay. When you go down south from the North Pole. Okay. So you, then you go down south here, 
and then by the time you get here, the um, the arrow is still pointing like in the direction of the y in, in the direction of the green axis, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and that's perpendicular now to the surface of B instead of being. Oh, I see. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so you start off with this plane here that's uh, perpendicular to the to the origin, whatever. I mean, to the point and the sphere that's on the origin, whatever. Uh, do this. Take your little ve vector, carry it all the way over here. Um, stop here at the North Pole. Um, and then carry your north pointing vector, your vector that's pointing sort of over the edge, and carry it over here where it is still pointing um, to perpendic it's pointing now um, to the west, right? Yeah. I mean, so, so like, in 3D space, you haven't really changed its direction, but on the surface of the Earth, it's right. uh, rotated magically. I see, I see, okay. Okay, that that's actually interesting. Okay, so we take this vector, we move it north, okay, yeah, we do that. Um, it, okay, then we are at the North Pole. At the North Pole, of course, we have a singularity in, in, in the uh, two-dimensional space. Um, and then you carry the vector down to the other point and at this point the vector is pointing in a different direction automatically uh, okay um, okay but that trick only works with the North Pole right uh, the trick that you get this much uh, angle yes but it's a general property of the two sphere that if you take uh, certain uh, paths around it, you won't get back with the same angle. Right, right, right. I mean, it could be any. It doesn't have to be ninety degrees. When you're at the North Pole, um, so it does matter what direction you came from. But from the North Pole, if you take that arrow and you grab it anywhere, anywhere when you go to south. Um, it's going to point on a depending on um, um, it's going to point d depending on the angle that's different the, the angle between you know the original point and the new point yeah so actually I'm not sure if I think this angle might be a characteristic of the surface but I'm not entirely sure so it might be that unless you take a great circle, mm -hmm. uh, if unless you parallel transport along a great circle, uh, you will always get this 90 degree. But I'm not entirely short, uh, sure. Uh, I mean, I know there are some sort of these these constructions that characterize the space, or the, I mean the the curvature right, of the right. surface. But it might be more complicated than just this. I mean, thing. Right, but what, I, what I'm saying is, even though the coordinates don't follow the normal rules, we still should be able to model this on a grid. I mean, the model's not going to look, it's going to look very strange, but it should still work. Yeah, I mean, of course you can do, uh, and map the 2D, the 2D surface to a regular grid. But, well, I mean, like, it's th this This is the unfolding of the Earth to a flat... Right, uh, which is impossible. Yeah, which ...problem, is where you have all these different coordinate yeah. transforms with various right. effects yes. that you have to trade off. Uh, the, just the normal cartography Well, but you don't, though, issues. because as long as you don't measure your distance as straight lines, um, you can redefine your metric any way you want. So, I mean, you're right, you can't get it to look like it's a 2D thing with lines and stuff like that, but you can define your distances to be different. Yeah, exactly. 
So that you can still do it. It's just going to look really strange because, for example, this distance from 60 to 20 is much shorter than this distance from 0 to 20 because you're at the you know equator here. You're at 60 degrees north here. That's much shorter. Um, but I think you can you can live with that as long as uh, you just realize that you know you're you're only using the uh, the Cartesian grid to represent coordinates. You're not going to say that straight lines are straight lines. Yeah. Okay. So how does this? How do we get use this in our problem? Well, that's where I'm not very sure. I mean, I n know there must be s uh, some way, and hopefully it's a very compact way, but it's also uh, somewhat exotic because it's differential geometry, and it's all of it is exotic. True. Um, I mean, at some point, we have to get a formula that is, uh, that is a function of you know, are three longitudes and latitudes. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what our output has to be. Um, is I mean, I guess I'll put in C longitude here too, but at some point that's what our... Um, what we need to know is what longitude and latitude are, is C closest to. Um, and we need to know, you know, the waypoints along A and B. Um, so, I mean, I'm comfortable with defining different measures in two-dimensional space. We don't have to say, you know, this distance is not necessarily the Pythagorean distance anymore it's measured in a very special way. Um, and we can use, um, we, we have formulas that t talk about distance um, in, this, in this space. In fact, I think you even pointed out that um, when you move along this line here, uh, you're only going, you know, the cosine of the distance of the latitude, right? Sorry, I'm not sure what you were pointing at. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, if you travel from the equator eastward, uh, then every degree of longitude is equal to every is equal to the degree of latitude, right? Did you illustrate something? I mean, no, I didn't. I, um, I'm just asking. Because you said that every degree of latitude was equal to every degree of longitude at the uh, equator. At the equator. In other words, one degree east longitude would be the same distance from the you know the point where you start than one degree of north latitude. So you're asking if you take if you go one degree in latitude, will you go the same distance as if you go one degree in longitude? Correct. Was that the question? Yes, that was my statement or claim. Yeah, sure. I agree with that. Okay, but if you're at let's say 40 degrees north latitude, and you go one degree east longitude, it is not the same. It is it is less distance. Yeah. Okay. So that that's all I'm saying is we don't have to make our um, we, we I, I understand that we're looking at the Cartesian version of the surface of a sphere. I understand that uh, our distances are not the same. Yeah, so the, the, what do you mean the distances are not the same? You mean uh, the, in the two coordinates? 
Yeah. Let me let me let me draw a diagram here. I think I can I think I can do this. I think I can get rid of all of these at once. I tried that once and it kind of worked. Delete. Good. Delete delete. Hang on, this takes a little doing. There we go. Everything nice and deleted. So what I'm saying is I understand. Let me see if I can draw a little distance thingy. Um, okay, we'll just use a vector. I understand that I understand that U and V are not the same length. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So I understand that, you know, if we said what's the quickest distance from A to D, this isn't it because we're not really on a, you know, we're not on a straight line surface. Um, and the actual, and so I guess what I'm saying is I'm comfortable with that concept that our distances are not linear distances anymore. But the question is, how do we model our distance now? Um, you know, what is the shortest point from A to D? How would we find that? So I'm uh, pretty sure that the shortest distance is uh, the wait, it's the geodesic between well, the yeah. points. Well, yes, yes. And I think the geodesic between the points is the path you get when you parallel transport your vector from one point to the other. Uh huh. Uh, I mean, there's a million ways you can parallel transport from A to D, right? No, I don't think there is. I mean, uh, there is this... Uh, oh. In this PDF, I... Uh, uh, linked this yes. section 3.3 .3, parallel transport where they uh, set up the equation that defines parallel transport or oh. I guess, uh, one of the equations that define parallel transport. Oh, I see what you're saying. So there's some condition that you must fulfill. So may, there might be several ways. Okay, yeah. So there are, I guess, several ways you can parallel transport. Right, but, uh, but there's only one way that you're going to be pointing. If you make a path of several uh, separate sections, so to speak. Like in our example, we obviously we could have done this go to, to some way to the other way to the other way, but uh, notice that we sort of have to change direction, and uh, when we change direction, this changing of direction when we go up down from the pole and then go back to where we started, and. Uh, at these points we have gone from sort of one parallel transport to another parallel transport. Okay, I mean, I guess the way I'm seeing it here is if you draw the arrow towards D and you just parallel transport it uh, without ever changing that angle, um, you will end up at D w with the shortest path. Yeah, exactly. And you will also be going on the uh, on a great circle. Right, if you right. look at the 3D one and you try to parallel transport, you push your arrow without turning it, right. you see you will come back where you came and you have traveled on uh, a great circle. Right, because you will keep, you'll do like this and then you'll circle the earth and come back to A. I can see that. Yeah. Um, problem, of course, is that arrow is going to look different uh, in this Cartesian space as it moves. Yeah, it's going to do weird things. 
But can so we still out? I was a sort of hesitant to talk about it in this space because I, I can't really say how it will look in this well, Cartesian. I actually think you can say that because it's not that difficult. The north and south things don't change at all. Um, the only thing that really changes is the like the east and west pointing of the thing is going to get tr it's going to get differently shaped because uh, what we consider to be uh, like northeast will change. So I guess what I'm saying here is can I really do this? No, I guess it doesn't let me do that. Okay, so um, wow. That was kind of ugly. Hang on one second. I'm going to move this back to the center. All right, point. So let's see between A and D. So you start out with the point looking pretty normal. I mean, you start out from here with l looking like this. Um, because you're at the point now where... Um, Jesus Christ. This thing sometimes works really well and sometimes works really sucky. But anyway, because um, at this point here, latitude and longitude are equal. But at this point here, um, and this isn't really northeast, but, but you know, whatever. Um, to keep going the same amount of north and east, you need to be... going like this now. Is that sort of what you're saying or no? I mean, I think what what this will ultimately say is that it would look like how great circles look like on right. flat maps. Right. So, that, I mean, that's unavoidably how it will look like when we're drawing it this way. Right. Like I'm trying to go the other way, though. I'm trying to say, can we figure out what a great circle would look like just using the flat map and using the, our knowledge that um, let's see using our knowledge that uh, the, the the longitude distance changes as you go further north okay but I might be confusing rum lines with great circles because those are not the same thing what lines did you say? Oh, rum, are you in... Uh, I'll spell it out in the chat here. These lines? Okay, I'm not very familiar with that. Okay, let me see if I, I can bring that up. I vaguely recognize it. I thought they were the same as geodesics, but they're not. Um... So here's, here's like the big difference between them. If I can click on, so the 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 great circle line would be like this line here. The run line is if you start here and you keep going in the same direction, and at every point you recompute your direction, you end up going like that. Okay, so there's some sort of local uh, Euclidean thing? Yes. At every point, you look at your local flat surface and go in the same... Like, if you're going southwest, you continue going southwest. Okay. And that's different from the Great Circle, where you would change your bearing as you travel. Okay. And so what the upshot of all that is with a rum line, um, by the time you get up to like 80 degrees, you're northeast um, is very much longer in this direction than it, in the x direction than it is in the y direction. Because to get the same amount of east you need, you know, as you're going north, you need to go much further. So I think that's the wrong interpretation that I'm making here. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure.
sure I understand your okay. your interpretation, but okay. if you're convinced, then that's good, I guess. Well, I'm convinced it's wrong, but I mean, I want to I want to explore how wrong it is. So what I'm saying here is, um, I can just draw a segment, I guess. So if you were right, right here, this would be going northeast. I mean, rough if this were infinitesimal, uh, right? It would look like this. Make sense? Yeah. Um, but now, if you were, at, uh, you know, at twenty degrees and you wanted to go northeast, your northeast would look more like this. Because you have to go more east just to make up for the north. Your slope is going to be different. Yeah. And then if you wanted to go from here, you know, as you keep going, it's going to keep getting flatter and flatter. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Let me actually move this. Oops. I mean, I, I've drawn these a little bit too uh, too close to the uh, to the equator. So by the time you get up like over here, by the time you get up over here. Now that now that doesn't look right. Sorry. Um, but anyway, so if you were drawing the run line, you would ha sort of asymptote up to the North Pole eventually. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, how would you make the same interpretation for the great circle distance? What would that path look like, and can we determine that without having to actually go to a, you know, um, actually have to go to a, 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 a sphere? So you mean all this now was discussed as rump lines? I thought you were talking about the Great Circle. No, no, I'm just saying I took a di I took a diversion, a digression into run lines to show that they're not the right way to do it. Um, so I understand, though, like, uh, if you were, like, you know, let's say you started out at the equator, wanted to go northeast, you'd go like this. But when you get here, northeast is now more like this. Then when you get here, northeast is more like this. And what you'd end up doing is basically just asymptoting yourself towards the North Pole. Does that make sense or no? So I think your example makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it's like, when I think about it, what does it mean to... I mean, so, okay, so you're saying that you're not on a great circle, but you're take, trying to take, s you, you, you're just going some direction Correct. that's vaguely north-ish, and then uh, you will make this rump spiral. Correct. That's what you're saying. Yes, that is correct. So, in other words, if you start off going northeast, and every point in your journey, you realign yourself so you're still going northeast with respect to that point, you will end up spiraling the, um, well, I mean, in this diagram, you'll end up asymptoting the, uh, the, the North Pole. And in the, you know, in the other diagram, you will end up spiraling the nor North Pole. So, okay, like, I mean, the, for me, the, the intuition to me seems that the problem with doing the ROM line is that when you're recomputing uh, the direction, you're not taking into account that you're on a sphere, you're just doing it sort of in Euclidean space. And that's why you get this uh, spiral thing. And if you had done it uh, with a proper two-sphere metric, you would correct just enough so that you do end up on a, a great circle. Okay. So that's my question, I think. I, uh, I mean... So this is what would happen if you tried to follow a rum line. But let's forget that. My question is... Question is... Complete. My question is, let's say you started off... Um, let's, yeah, let, me, let me do this. You wanted to go from this point here to this point here. 
My question is, how would you determine the vector at this point and then at every point along the journey? Is that easy to do or is that hard to do? Because of the lag, I'm not sure w w what you were pointing at when you said at this point. Oh, so you, you want to there or sure, sure. Wiggle the mouse a really long time. Um, okay, so you're trying to fly from point A to point B. My question is: at A, is there an easy way to calculate your initial bearing? I'm not sure if if it's in the like if you're on a two sphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, so naively I would just say, well, I mean, you just align your coordinate system. But I realize you have to uh, and figure out how to go from this convenient coordinate system where everything is aligned to the actual Earth coordinate system. Correct. And if there's a easy, I don't know if there's an easy way to. Okay, but I thought that was the whole point is we're trying to find a, sort of an easy way of, uh, of saying, you know, what's, th what's the metric here? We know what the metric is. Uh, we know that the metric is this distance is bigger than this distance. We're, we're, we're on top of that. Um, so, oh. So if you wanted the shortest distance to this point... Um, you would travel more north than east. Okay. Because, okay. So your great circle line... Hmm... I mean, so my idea, uh, or like, the the reason is that, so, in the on the two sphere, and uh, the shortest distance is just, I mean, it's just the parallel transport between your start and your end point, and the the distance between the this great circle joining them and uh, the other points that might be a I mean the third point that's somewhere between. Mm -hmm. I think if you understand geometric, uh, not differential geometry, then these things are easy to calculate in this picture. And then uh, you, so you get out all your, you do your optimizations in this picture, and then you have your points, and then you do some messy calculation to get back to the Earth coordinate system. Okay, can you do that? Can you do that? I can't. Okay. It's an interesting idea. I really like it. And I think, I think, I think, and there's a lot of ways you can go from point A to point B. Uh, the straight line is not going to be the shortest here because our metric says, you know, each degree of longitude is changing how, 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 how it is. Um, so at this point, if you wanted to achieve, okay, okay, hang on. If at this point you wanted to achieve 100 degrees east longitude and 60 degrees um, north latitude, you know, you want to go 60 degrees north in latitude, 100 degrees east in longitude, um, because 100 uh, degrees in longitude is only worth that times cosine 20, um, you would probably take, hang on, cosine of 20 degrees times 100, okay, and I would like that in units I can use, so that's like 93 degrees of, uh, equivalent of 93 degrees of latitude, so I'm going to go 60 and, um, 93, 60 comma 93, which would be, um, okay, hang on. So your slope here would be 60 
so it would be an up of let's say 10 to 20 degrees latitude and an across of um, so I probably did, I meant to say 20 here and no not qu it's the other way around um, yeah I don't know what I'm doing I was just saying though you're 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 you wouldn't do a straight line here because the straight line is not the shortest path anymore. Um, what you would do is actually like do something like that. In other words, take a, like a great circle kind of thing here. Now what's interesting here, and I doubt this is going to work. Um, if this were a straight line, we could take the perpendicular bisector. Um, let me just put a point here. And, I mean, this is probably garbage, but anyway. Um, oh, hang on, let's see, I want... Oh. Okay. So now, I can move this until it touches both uh, points. Is that the great circle route, though? I mean, it's obviously a circle on two dimensions, but that doesn't count. Yeah, no, I, I don't think uh, it's going to be coincident that the... Uh, okay. That okay. Uh, the... Actually, um, it's sort of confusing because this is really some... Uh, Actually, we're talking about some really uh, abstract uh, visualization of the two sphere in two dimensions. Okay. Because, like, technically, uh, I guess the north, the, the, there's the singularity that's the right. infinite point above. So, if you go infinitely high up on the y axis, then you end up in the same point. Wherever right. you are on the x-axis, right? Right, right. because at like the North speed. Pole, your all of that longitudes converge. Okay, so yeah, I was just trying to think: is there an easy way to do this? Uh, is there an easy way to understand what the Great Circle would look like in two dimensions? I mean, obviously we can draw it; people have drawn it before. But is there a nice sort of, uh, yeah? Is there sort of a nice I interpretation? Think I think this, uh, it's just, it doesn't end up being particularly nice. I think that's probably the sad truth. But okay. if you do it in sort of abstract differential geometry, then steps on the way can be pretty nice. And then you will get the ugly out at some point or the other. So all you're doing is you're changing where the ugly happens. Yeah, I mean you can shift where the ugly is at, so to somewhere, some point where it's not as bad as if in another one. That's that's always what happens when you go from one language to the other, right? You you mm -hmm. still have the same problem, but like part of it might be com convenient, uh, more convenient to do in one form than in another. Right. I mean, one one sort of issue with all of this is whatever formula I came up with. I mean, I can show that it's accurate. So that means somehow we're going to end up with the formula that's equivalent to that one, right? I mean, if it's the right answer, any other formula that gives the same results is the same function. It just might be written more nicely. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we found the answer. We're just looking for a better form of the answer, but an equivalent form. Okay. Well, do you have anywhere further to go with this? Uh, not right now. This was too f too long ago since I did anything with ge uh, okay. differential geometry, so I need to study up quite a bit okay. before I can do anything concrete, I, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, all right, shall we go ahead and call the stream? Uh, shall we end the stream now? Yeah, I think so. All right, thank you everyone for joining us, and uh, thank you to... Uh, I forgot your name, the name you wanted, uh, Toby Chev, for uh, joining me.
And uh, goodbye, and if I stream again today, it'll be insane, but I might do it anyway. Bye for now.